can a christian have a homosexual habit yes in capital letters it's like somebody says i have anger issues i am working on it it's the same thing he has homosexual issue he is also working on it i have anger issues i know i am saved i know i am born again i am working on it yes the homosexual has homosexual issues he's born again he is saved he is working on it it's identity crisis the question is if such people are saved and they go and change their organ will they be in heaven yes they will be in heaven but they will have ethnic shortages homosexuality is in the same class with lies and it's in the same class with anger and it's in the same class with unforgiveness it's only in your head that is big <laughs> dr damina what's your take on homosexuals and all the bisexuals and all the different sexuals i say god loves all of them I say should they come to church yes where else should they go church is where they should come they're having crisis in their mind and only the gospel can rewind the mind it's just identity crisis they don't know who they are and when a man doesn't know who he is he can become a dog he can become a cow he can become anything so the gospel will fix you by revealing you to you once you know who you are you will put off the wrong identity and put on the right identity am i talking to somebody here so we love them we love them homos we love them lesbians we love all of them the greatest problem of mankind is identity crisis that is why the solution to man's problem is the revelation of jesus when you see jesus in jesus you see yourself once you see yourself crisis ends oh like never before that's our mandate to reintroduce jesus to this generation equipping the believer to know who you are in christ what you have in christ and what christ can do through you that's what we're about as a church and i declare unto you you will proclaim this gospel so man with man is a sin not a sin in a special book of the bible not a sin in a special book of the bible to say i'm a homosexual is like saying i'm a prostitute it's like saying i'm a fornicator it's like saying i'm a liar it's the same thing so if you are lying and you still speak in tongues then a homosexual can be speaking in tongues and leading worship he's suffering from identity yes. As he grows in revelation knowledge, the appetite will disappear. All these guys who say, I feel like a woman. Sin is judged after faith is rejected. Jesus never singled out anybody's sin. Jesus never singled out anybody's sin. What Jesus singled out was unbelief. What Jesus singled out was unbelief. You can't deal with it, but Jesus has dealt with it. You can't handle it. Hey brother, get out of the way. You are not the savior of the world. Jesus will take care of the matter. Let Jesus do what only he can do in people's life. Stop being the registrar of heaven and stop being the secretary of heaven. Give way, my friend. You cannot save a fly. Let Jesus do what he alone can do. Leave the man with Jesus. Two of them will sort themselves out. Am I talking to somebody here? Mendo Labayata. Stop looking for people's shortcomings. You do you have your own. Concentrate on your own and solve your own. Jesus knows what to do with them. The gospel is the power of God unto salvation. Zika Dagabayata. Zika Gabadagaya. Homosexuality is a sin. Don't be scared of it. Somebody says I'm a homosexual. I say, Aye, blood of Jesus. Stand there. No. No. It's a sin like every other sin. For the wrath of God is revealed from heaven against all ungodliness and unrighteousness of men who hold the truth in unrighteousness. Wherefore, God also gave them up to uncleanness through the loss of their own hearts to dishonor their own bodies between themselves underline that to dishonor their own bodies between themselves who change the truth of god into a lie they change the truth of god a man goes to hospital removes his organ as a man and wears a woman's organ who change the truth of god into a lie a man looking for another man to sleep with 
in a world of so many women that humorously within the week i even had as a nation where their president said every man should marry two wives because the women are too much so in a world of so many women a man chasing man bro some of them say that's how i was born that's a lie you're changing the truth of god into a lie nobody was born like that you're just suffering from identity crisis you don't know yourself you're lost and you can never know yourself till you know christ all of these lesbians homosexuals beast be, girls given to bestiality all of these uh, 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 bisexuals all of them are victims of identity crisis they expose themselves to an information that programmed and configured their feelings dr damina what's your take on homosexuals and all the bisexuals and all the different sexuals i say god loves all of them I say should they come to church yes where else should they go church is where they should come because they are not normal they are having crisis in their mind and only the gospel can rewind the mind it's just identity crisis they don't know who they are and when a man doesn't know who he is he can become a dog he can become a cow he can become anything so the gospel will fix you by revealing you to you once you know who you are you will put off the wrong identity and put on the right identity am i talking to somebody here so we love them we love them homos we love them lesbians we love all of them oh yes we love them and we are not playing we genuinely love them and we feel for their condition and we want to be of help we have people back in nigeria who are homosexuals and lesbians who just by following my ministry have gotten out of all that and they have realized who truly they are and they are free from it people that were bound by pornography totally liberated and set free by the gospel they hear nobody condemning them just bringing their realities to them bringing their realities to them once their reality is on them they will recover their senses the prodigal son say what am i doing here what am i but before that he thought he was doing the right thing but when his senses came back he said what am i doing i'm eating with pigs i will arise in my father's house even servants have enough to eat i will go back home and i will say to my father make me a servant but you know what he came and the father says my son that is lost is back but he had to come back to his senses so what the gospel does is to bring you back to your senses they are suffering from identity the greatest problem of mankind is identity crisis that is why the solution to man's problem is the revelation of jesus when you see jesus in jesus you see yourself once you see yourself crisis ends oh like never before that's our mandate to reintroduce jesus to this generation equipping the believer to know who you are in christ what you have in christ and what christ can do through you that's what we're about as a church and i declare unto you you will proclaim this gospel first timothy 1 10 for warmongers for them that defile themselves with mankind that defile themselves with mankind that defile themselves with mankind is the greek word it means man with man to defile with mankind mean man going after man is a sin romans 1 27 again you will see it there and likewise also the men leaving the natural use of the woman bond in their loss one toward another men with men walking that which is unseemly and receiving in themselves that that the compens of their error which was meat men with men walking that which is unseemly however it is a sin that is washed homosexually is a sin that is washed in first corinthians 6 11 and such were some of you but you are washed you are sanctified you are justified in the name of the lord jesus and by the spirit of our god you are washed so the homosexual man the lying man and those who are not in such habits all of them require faith in christ to be saved the homosexual the liar and those that don't have those habitual bondages both day and day require faith in christ to be saved so man with man is a sin not a sin in a special book of the bible not a sin in a special book of the bible to say i'm a homosexual is like saying i'm a prostitute it's like saying i'm a fornicator it's like saying i'm a liar it's the same thing should a person who claimed to be a holy uh, to be holy ghost filled be a homosexual and lead the worship team in worship 
Oh yes, it's possible. Possible. Homosexuality does not allow a man from receiving the Holy Ghost. Just like the sins of men they didn't stop Jesus from dying. Homosexuality is in the same class with lies. And it's in the same class with anger. And it's in the same class with unforgiveness. It's only in your head that is big. <laughs> but before God sin is sin, there's no classification. So if you're lying and you're still speaking tongues, then a homosexual can be speaking in tongues and leading worship. He's suffering from identity crisis. As he grows in relational knowledge, the appetite will disappear. All these guys who say, I feel like a woman, this identity crisis is in the mind. Your emotions are controlled by the mind. Do you follow my series? Yes, sir. You follow the inward witness? Yes, sir. That is where we have all of these crises. Once you're exposed to new information, your emotions change. We expose them to the truth in Christ and they get out of homosexuality. Can a Christian have a homosexual habit? Yes, in capital letters. So how can somebody imagine that God destroys homosexuals? God does not destroy anybody. People choose destruction when they reject god's salvation people choose destruction when they reject god's salvation and we don't stigmatize people no we love all of them we love all of them we have no problem with them the gospel accepts everybody the way they are don't change before you come come the way you are don't try to change because you'll be a hypocrite come the way you are the gospel will bring the power that will change you is the power of god unto what salvation god saves the homosexuals just like he saves the fearful just like he saves the backbiters just like he saves people with strife and anger and all sins sin is judged after faith is rejected jesus never singled out anybody's sin Jesus never singled out anybody's sin. What Jesus singled out was unbelief. What Jesus singled out was unbelief. So if Sodom and Gomorrah was destroyed, it's the same thing that they did that happened in the days of Noah. Unbelief, not homosexuality but homosexuality is a sin it is called sexual immorality homosexuality is a sin just like fornication and adultery and lasciviousness they are all sins in the same class so such people are not hopeless such people are not evil such people are not bad they are victims of circumstances they are in dire need of help they do not call for our judgment because you have not been where they were maybe if you were where they were you would have been worse than them you've got to be where somebody is first and not be like he is to be able to judge him but if not been, you've not been where he is you don't judge him you look for how to help him that's why God doesn't judge us he comes into our circumstances and he helps us out of our circumstances god commended his love towards us in that while we were yet sinners christ didn't judge us god sent not his son into the world to judge the world but that through him the world might be saved so when you see people in certain very uncomfortable conditions don't be judgmental because you have not been where they have been so you don't understand what they were exposed to am i talking to somebody here you show some kind of, you show some understanding show some compassion show some, some love if that's all you do is enough but you can go beyond that and help to bring such people out we have a ministry of reconciliation not a ministry of destruction teaching good this morning they didn't put themselves into those conditions so that's why you reach out with understanding you reach out bible says if a man be overtaken in a fault he that are spiritual restore such a one in the spirit of meekness not judgmental in the spirit of meekness considering yourself lest you also be tempted meaning that what they are going through you're not better than them maybe if you're in their shoe you will have been worse than them so let there be an understanding as you seek to help people am i teaching good it's like somebody says i have anger issues i am working on it it's the same thing he has homosexual issue 
he is also working on it it's the same thing i have anger issues i know i am saved i know i am born again i am working on it yes the homosexual has homosexual issues he's born again he is saved he is working on it so what do you do to the homosexual put him on the mirror let him see christ as he begins to look into that perfect law of liberty we all with open face beholding the glory of god as in a mirror we are changed into that same image from glory to glory even as by the spirit of the lord when people look at the mirror the change takes place people are not changed by condemnation people are changed by righteousness awake to righteousness and sin not people are not changed by pointing them to their sin people are changed by pointing them to the truth all i do is show you the truth when i give you the truth i leave you with the truth the truth will do what it is best in doing and what does the truth do it sets free we preach the truth we preach the message of christ we leave people with jesus he knows what to do with them you may reject the prostitute but jesus accepts her to kiss his legs you can't deal with it but jesus has dealt with it you can't handle it hey brother get out of the way you are not the savior of the world jesus will take care of the matter let jesus do what only he can do in people's life stop being the registrar of heaven and stop being the secretary of heaven give way my friend you cannot save a fly let jesus do what he alone can do leave the man with jesus two of them will sort themselves out am i talking to somebody here Mendo Labayata, stop looking for people's shortcomings. You two, you have your own. Concentrate on your own and solve your own. Jesus knows what to do with them. The gospel is the power of God unto salvation. Zigadagabayada, Zigagabadagaya. Even the issue of transgender is identity crisis. How can a man just wake up and say, I'm a woman? Mm -mm. i'm a woman i'm no i'm not a man and he goes to hospital and pays expensively for him to be operated on it's identity crisis the question is if such people are saved and they go and change their organ will they be in heaven yes they will be in heaven but they will have at least shortages they will have what at least shortages glory to god how do you treat such situ um, situation wherein you have a brother or a sister that is homosexual right yep well they said they have accepted the message yes they are gifted yes should we or should we not allow them for example sing in the choir play instruments no, 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 no. how You're do you how do you go about dealing with such that situations? is putting the cat before the horse a brother comes to church is born again and i discover he's a homosexual he needs me to disciple him so i'll draw him close and disciple him in the process of discipleship all that nonsense will stop I'll be back. By the time I'm done discipling him, he's fit to, to be a worship leader. Yes. When you bombard him with proper discipleship, that means he has not understood, understood the protocol of that church. You don't come to church for leadership. You come to church to know Christ. Once that culture is established, when they come in, they will fit in. So you have to emphasize that culture. Here in this church, we don't come here for leadership or service. We come here to sit and learn of Christ. Amen. That's, you must establish that Yes, you talk. Sorry, you say it every service. You keep announcing it till it sinks in that this is the culture of this church. The first thing you come here to do is to learn Christ. So don't come here with the thought of service. We don't want you to serve till you learn Christ. Look at what Jesus says. Matter, matter. You care and matter about so many things. One thing is needful. And your sister has chosen the better part. What is the better part? Sit down and take notes. So that must be the emphasis. Once they understand that, nobody will think of service and leadership. All they will be thinking of is learning. But as they are learning and growing, we are appointing leaders among them. There was a hand at the back. Okay. Uh, praise the Lord. Hallelujah. I'm Elfrida, and my question uh, kind of goes in line with a couple of the questions that was asked earlier today concerning the um, gay, lesbians, homophobic, okay. and ho homosexuals. Okay. Um, how can we make sure that we're not signaling people like that out um, to cause this fear in them not to come to the church whenever we're asking questions or if we're talking about working in ministry? Because like you rightly said, this, the church is where sinners come to to get Jesus. 
you know, you, you come here to get understanding. Sure. So how do we make sure that we're not just pointing those people out because everybody some, have something going on. Just because we don't see it physically doesn't mean we're good. Very true. So how do we make sure? We make sure by making sure. What did I say? We make sure by making sure. How? We don't preach at them and we don't make them our message. We preach the gospel. We preach Christ. We keep revealing Christ. In the process, they will get sorted. There's no gospel for homosexuals. Homosexuality did not start today. Even under the ministry of Jesus, they were there. But Jesus never talked about them. We don't talk about them. The only time you hear me call homosexuals is when I'm doctrinally teaching mm. to explain how God views such sins. That's the only time. Otherwise, you never hear it in my message. Right. Never. Because yeah, okay. there's no big deal. They are just people who need help. Right. So how do we make sure that even in service, we do not make them feel unwanted? Because when it comes to church leadership, the prerequisite is you only appoint people whom you know. You've got from Exodus, Moses was appoint people whom he knows. In Acts chapter 6, select honest men full of the Holy Ghost from among you. That means you know them. You know them. You know their history. You know their testimony. You know their lifestyle. I can't appoint you a leader under me if I don't know you. Mm -hmm. And it takes me a while to, to get to know you. Yep, that's right, yeah. That sorts the matter. Yes. So that way, nobody's talking about them. Nobody's looking for their trouble. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, we are doctrinally sound to know that we only appoint people into service positions whom we know. Mm -hmm. Is that clear? And some of them, by being among us, eventually get over that and they become a blessing. And we also get to know that they are a blessing. And without even knowing that they were there before, we appoint them because now we know them and we don't know about the other side because they got over it. So you appoint people whom you know. You don't go around sniffing. Are you a homo? Are you a less? Are you? Which one are you? No, we don't go around doing that. We just select people whom we know. Is that clear? And as a pastor, if you're a good pastor, it will be easy for you to know the people you have. Just by interacting and watching them and talking with them, you begin to know them. And by giving them responsibilities and watching how they also live their private lives, you begin to know them. After a while, you have an understanding of the kind of person that you have with you. A good pastor must be able to pay attention to the people around you and pay attention to how they conduct their lives. A pastor must know that. If you don't know that, you're not a good pastor. Part of pastoring is to look after your sheep and get to know them. Sometimes they are getting out of church, you sneak behind and watch how they behave in the parking lots. Oh, I do it. I do it. I, I, me? <laughs> My office is up, 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 up. Okay, in the story building. And I have transparent glass all over my office. So I sit on my table and I watch people as they come to church. And when we close, I'm watching them. I'm watching how they talk to each other. I'm watching how they greet each other. I'm watching those who snub people and those who ignore people. I'm watching. I'm seeing everybody and I know everybody. Wow. Praise God. Wow. Because a good pastor must know his people. You've got to know them. Sometimes just pay them a visit. Oh, how are you? I just stopped by to, to, to get to meet you and uh, pray with you. Let's pray. You pray and you're out. Make your visit pastoral. Have no casual visits. Have no casual visits. You say, I just came to hang out with you. Hang what? Are you jobless? Every visit must be to encourage or to pray. And get out. Have no casual visits. So you don't create room for familiarity. Which will undermine the purpose for which we got to meet each other. 
Do you understand what I'm saying? Yes. So if you're visiting, it must be on purpose. But even on that purpose, you're able to observe. You observe the people he hangs out or she hangs out with. You observe the environment. You observe how life is lived around the person. All of that will help you in knowing who you have in your congregation. Yeah. So when leadership time comes, it's easy to know who and who to appoint because you have a fair knowledge of the people around you. Is it clear? You will preach this good news. You will preach it on the mountaintop. You will preach it on the housetop. You will preach it in the villages. You will preach it in the cities. You will preach it in your office. You will make Jesus known to your generation. In the name of Jesus. Passion for souls. Hunger for souls. Desire for evangelism. Desire to see sinners saved. Desire to see the labor of Jesus not wasted. I command it to consume you. In the name of Jesus. And I declare the grace of God to be abundantly multiplied in your life. Great grace upon you today. Throughout this week, enjoy the abundance of grace. Enjoy the gift of righteousness. Walk in the liberty of sonship. Walk free from the condemnation of sin in the name of jesus father i give you praise father i give you praise father i give you praise in jesus precious name and every believer says that amen like you know what you're talking about 